Changes call for innovation and innovation leads to progress. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Swati from QGlue, your co-host. I welcome you all to the webinar on trend-driven innovation, the counterintuitive secret to anticipating what your consumers will want next by Nathania Christie. Nathania heads the Global Inside Network at Trend Watching. Let me give you a quick introduction of QGlue. QGlue is a design and innovation arm of QAI, a 25 plus years transnational organization that is helping accelerate design-led innovation through a variety of interventions. While QAI is a global consulting advisory and workforce development organization addressing operational excellence, QGlue uses design-led practices to help business build services that people will adapt and impact the world around us. Using a human-centered approach, QGlue equips people to solve complex problems by helping them reach a solution that is not just right, but also desirable. Leading thought leaders and practitioners across industries have come together in QGlue to create an entity leveraging on the legacy and foundation of QAI. I hope you all have a great session. You can send in your questions during the webinar and we'll dedicate the last 10 minutes for Q&A. Over to Nia. All right, thanks so much, Swati. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you all for tuning into our webinar uh, together with QGlue on trend-driven innovation methodology. It's a counterintuitive secret to anticipating what your customers will want next. So in the next 45 minutes, we're going to dive deeper into number one, what is trend-driven innovation or in short TDI? And number two, how can you be a trend-driven innovator on your own? And lastly, what are some of the trends that we've spotted that will help you make sense of change in a post-COVID world? But we're gonna do it differently this time. And in the last part, when I will be sharing with you the trends, I will, I will do it backwards and I will share with you how we come up with this trend and how we formulate this trend at Trend Watching so that you will be able to once you move from this webinar um, and go on with your daily lives, you'll be able to spot and track trends on your own. So, and then at the end, we're gonna leave uh, some time, about 10 minutes for Q&A. So if you have any questions along the presentation, feel free to just take note of it somewhere else first. And then at the end, you can write it down and then I'll be happy to answer any question that you have. So before we start, a little bit of introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Nathania Christie, and you can call me Mia. I'm the head of Global Insight Network at Trend Watching, or uh, TWIN in short. It's a community where 1,700 uh, plus people from all around the world who are forward thinking, who are passionate about uncovering the latest trends, they come together to share about trends, about innovations that they're seeing in the market. And it's a very dynamic and global community. And outside of Twin, I also um, run the content for APAC and I write and research trends for um, the APAC market and our APAC clients. That's a little bit about myself. Now, why are you here joining uh, this webinar? I don't typically quote Vladimir Lenin. Uh, it's, this is the first time. I hope you trust me on that. But this quote really captures the world today. There are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happens. And this is such weeks when we're really living day by day and we're seeing new things coming into the market, new situation, numbers rising quickly when it comes to our situation with uh, COVID-19. And if you're like me, you might feel so overwhelmed by the pace of change that's happening today. This invisible virus is, is wrecking havoc to almost all areas of our lives. Uh, we saw some areas that is being impacted by COVID-19 in the US alone. We saw this um, unprecedented chart where right now more than 22 million people in the US claim for unemployment benefits. And this has never been seen before. We also see the impact that it has on um, the natural environment that we're in. And as all the economic activities are now halted, well, some blessing in disguise, air pollution levels have gone down in various countries, including India as well. And we see millions of people being domesticated at home and they're looking into new things to entertain themselves. And guess what? 
how many of you have tried this coffee before? This is Dalgona coffee and Google search for Dalgona coffee increased by 500% because of the quarantine. And we also see a lot of businesses having to pivot when it comes to their business model, when it comes to their strategy. And this is Airbnb launching an online Airbnb experiences because everyone are confined to their homes. And yes, things may feel very uncertain for a lot of you, not just personally, but also when it comes to your business, when it comes to your job. And amid all of this uncertainty, people are wondering and, and trying to answer uh, what will your consumers want next? How can you move forward? But I am here to reassure you and share with you a very simple framework that we use at Trend Watching to make sense of change. And more than anything, trend-driven innovation is really about a new way of seeing the world, of trying to make sense of the accelerating pace of change that is happening all around us today, and especially so during COVID-19 era. So before we move forward, it's good to have a little bit of introduction, just a very short one about trend watching, who we are and what we do so that we can set the rest of the presentation in context. Um, so trend watching, we are founded in Amsterdam back in 2002. And right now we have teams in Berlin and in Singapore and in New York. We have an innovation of the day newsletters that go into 100,000 plus business professionals uh, every morning. And really this is all about giving you just one innovation each day and how can you unwrap this innovation and think about how you can apply it in your own business. So just one innovation to keep you engaged, to keep you up to date, to keep you motivated to start innovating on your own. And that is free. Uh, so you can go and subscribe to that. Um, we also offer a premium online database for our uh, clients all around the world from Spotify to Singtel um, to give them a head start um, on innovations. We also do a lot of live engagements uh, and right now, of course, it includes online keynotes and, and workshops and events. Um, and everything that we do is powered by Trend Watching Insight Network and that is our global community uh, that I mentioned uh, before. And via Slack, we all uh, share and contribute uh, different innovations and we do uh, trainings for our members uh, in TWIN as well. Uh, and of course, we continue to innovate within our own space as well. And these are just some of our recent initiatives. We have a business of purpose uh, community that you can be a part of. We just launched recently COVID innovations where we park all of the innovations that are related to COVID-19. We are in the midst of working towards launching our Trend Watching Academy, uh, where you can learn more about how you can spot trends, track trends, and run with trends to create your own innovations. So we're going to talk a lot about trends in this webinar. What do we mean by trends? There's a lot of different definition when it comes to trends, and the world of trends itself is very broad. So at Trend Watching, when we talk about trends, we don't mean fashion trends. We don't know what's the next color palette, for example, that's going to be hot in the next runway. Uh, we're not industry specialists. You know your industry better. That's what we always say. But we are here to tell you about consumer trends, the behavior that um, is changing among your consumers, regardless of their industry. And when we talk about trends, it's not about data. Yes, data is important in understanding trends, but it's only part of the picture. We are interested in digging deeper into what does this data mean when it comes to our understanding of consumer uh, behavior. It's also not about um, new technology, even though technology is a key driver of consumer behavior. It's not the only one. So we look beyond industry-specific trends, we look beyond data, we look beyond new technology being launched in the market, and it's also not about fads. Fads come and go, but trends emerge and evolve. So if you're thinking about the latest face app feature that the Jonas Brothers are using to make themselves look old, 
that's not what we're talking about. So what is consumer trend? What is our definition of consumer trend? A consumer trend is a new manifestation among people of a fundamental human need, want, or desire. So let me say that again. A consumer trend is a new manifestation among people of fundamental human needs, wants, or desire. And why do we track trends? Why is it important to track trends? It's important because it will help you meet and surpass customers' rapidly changing expectations. And that's the key word that we'll be talking about more and more, um, and that is changing expectations in consumers' life. So at this point, it may sound like it's a mouthful, so we're going to take a step back and really break down all of the statements into the fundamental components, the fundamental trend elements. And crucially, why tracking trends is important is because every business is you right now listening to this webinar amid all of the questions that you have when it comes to um, doing business in a post-COVID world and all of the other concerns that you might have in the end to be successful in the business arena it's all about understanding what your consumers will want next and if you're not thinking about that question already you should be thinking about that question what will my consumers will want next and of course, there's a lot of different ways to understand what your consumers will want next. And traditional market research would say, well, if you want to know what consumers will want next, then just ask them, do surveys or focus group discussions, group interviews to try to really uncover what they will want next. But if you remember back in the days of Henry Ford, if Henry Ford were to ask consumers what they will want next, they would say faster horses we want faster horses and there would be no cars steve jobs is also famous for saying that our job is to figure out what they're going to do before um, they want uh, before they know what they want uh, and people don't know what they want until you show it to them that's why he said i never rely on market research and our task is to read things that are not yet on the page and okay so if we can't really ask consumers, what about observing them? So a lot of people then go on to do um, ethnographic research and they try to really understand the consumers by watching them. But yes, there, there's some merit to that process, but it can be slow and time consuming. And with the rapid change that is happening in the market, once you have the findings, the situation already evolves and it's no longer relevant. Or right now, a lot of people say, well, we have big data. Why don't we turn to big data? And yes, big data is good in really trying to understand the details, the numbers, and drill down into that level of understanding. But using data alone, it's, it's hard for you to uncover anything really new. So then what's the secret? How can we understand consumers and, and really anticipate what they want next in a, in a way that is very agile and um, also robust at the same time. And this is our counterintuitive secret at trend watching on how we are able to anticipate and understand what our consumers will want next. And the secret is very simple. To know what your consumers will want next, stop asking the consumers but watch business innovations instead. So watch business innovations first and then ask your consumers. And at this point, you are probably wondering, how does it work? How can I watch business innovations? And how can that help me understand consumers? And here's why, and here's how. So if we look at trend-driven innovation and the fundamental trend elements, on one hand, you have change. The world is changing all the time. And we know that, especially today, when it comes to the pandemic, right? We see the world is changing at such an accelerating pace. And change happens across um, all sectors, from economic change, political change, societal change, um, environmental change. Change is happening all the time. And at Trend Watching, we have a way to understand and categorize change. and 
on one hand, we can look at change um, in terms of shifts. And shifts are a long, slow moving currents that changes over time. And these are some examples of shift um, aging population, AI advances, uh, brand purpose, climate crisis. Those are part of um, shifts. But when it comes to when, when it comes to um, the other side of change, we also have triggers. And triggers are short, snappy, they are one-off incidents that really, as the name suggests, trigger people into action. So you can understand drivers of change by looking at shifts and looking at triggers. And so that's one component of um, the fundamental trend elements. On one hand, the drivers of change. But on the other hand, we always say at Trend Watching that we are the same old people, we are the same old humans with the same old basic needs. And yes, even though the world is changing all the time, we have to remember that as humans, we have very deep, very basic needs that don't change year on year, century to century, um, decades to decades, and they're what makes us human. And this is very powerful in helping anchor ourselves when it comes to understanding consumers. So what are some basic needs that revolves around the consumer's life? It can be the need for authenticity. It can be the need for um, belonging, the need for collaboration or community. These are some basic needs that you can consider when you think about um, this fundamental trend elements. And something interesting happens when change bumps again core human needs because then there will be tension because now people are looking at their basic needs and they're looking at change and they expect, how can I satisfy this needs in a new way? How can I satisfy this need by taking into account um, all this change that is happening around me? And that is why we look at innovations because innovations resolve that tension that is created by change and basic needs and innovations create new expectations and so that is why we look at innovations that is the third element of the fundamental trend elements we look to innovations because number one they help us to see new ways of serving our basic needs but the second thing why we look at innovations is because innovations that are really exciting, that are really novel, they, they will create new expectations for people. And so lastly, we want to analyze what is the emerging expectations that come out of those innovations that we are seeing. For example, Spotify. Now almost everyone use Spotify and you see that Spotify not only um, elevate your experience and disrupt your experience when it comes to music, not just in the music industry, but now everyone has that expectation when it comes to personalization, when, it's, when it comes to relevance. People are saying that Spotify Discover Weekly knows me better than my boyfriend. And so that kind of expectation doesn't, doesn't look at industry boundaries. So you could be an FND provider, you could be someone in retail and your consumers can look at Spotify and ask yourself, can you deliver that kind of relevance for me? Can you deliver that kind of personalization for me? So the thing about new expectations, about emerging expectation that comes out of an innovation is that it will transfer across industry, across region, across consumers, demographic groups. And we see that one other example from subscription, for example, we saw um, this dollar uh, shave club in the US that are providing subscription for cheap razors. And we saw how this transfers to FNB. In Singapore, there's now a coffee subscription called Perk. So you don't have to do anything. It's very convenient, delivered to your door, freshly roasted, um, and you get it and you can consume it um, right, uh, maybe a two, hour, two, two days delay after it's being roasted. And we see the same expectation of subscription, of having um, 
personalized convenience service transfer across to fashion. Now with style theory, you don't need to buy uh, clothes anymore, but you can subscribe and rent the runway with style theory. And we have, of course, rent the runway in the US as well. And it gets transferred again to automotive industry. And this ad by Volvo captures it really well. It says that you used to buy music too. So you see how all, this, all of these expectations are being transferred across industry. One innovation, powerful innovation, setting expectation, raising the bar, and then it gets transferred across. I'll give you another example to illustrate this concept of expectation transfer. If we take a look at Instagram, Instagram creates that expectation on self-expression. Now you want to be able to express yourself um, and show other people how colorful your life looks like. And how does that transfer across industries that you wouldn't think about? Of course, F&B is still very closely related. Now people are offering rainbow food, be it toast or frappuccino, um, donuts, all sorts of food. It has to be Instagrammable because you want to express yourself. And F&B players will now have to uh, reimagine their offering. We also see that happening in travel. Travel now has to be Instagrammable as well. You want to portray yourself, express yourself as enjoying your uh, holiday in such destination. It's really cool, even though maybe the reality is different uh, than your expectation. But it doesn't matter as long as you can express yourself through Instagram. And we see that transferring even to industry like packaging. So what you're seeing here is a packaging that is printed in reverse so that it's perfect for mirror selfies. Um, so even packaging are being disrupted as an industry. We see games being Instagrammable. So now you can take a selfie in your game avatar, in your game, and then you can post it on Instagram. And we see how this is impacting individuals like Kylie Jenner at 21 because of her Instagram. Um, she's now America's uh, billionaires. And of course, you can argue whether or not she is self-made, but you see the point that expectations, innovations create expectations, and that is being transferred across. One last um, example for you to consider is the ripple effect. And this is a concept that we borrow from um, someone in Deloitte. He was present in, I uh, was present in our event. And he said that if you consider the innovation that is um, shared electric scooter, right now they're popping up everywhere. It's now already being regulated, but think about that innovation for a while and consider the effects that it has on other industries. Now, because of that innovation, it's impacting property prices because usually property prices can come on a premium if it's located near the train station. But now, because you can ride an e-scooter, it's more convenient. You don't need to stay near a train station. And you see that prices that are further away um, from the train station can also increase because of that. And you see how it's affecting uh, retail traffic. Because right now, maybe um, it's more convenient for you to ride on your e-scooter to get your groceries rather than buying it online. It's so much faster. And so um, traffic volume could be impacted by this ripple effect. And we see countries like uh, Bolivia, whose main source of GDP is by producing lithium. Because you need lithium for the batteries for e-scooters, it's affecting their GDP. And maybe it could affect foreign policies as well among countries. And we know how dangerous that, uh, this e-scooters can be. It could potentially maybe affect your insurance premiums as well. And so what I'm trying to say with all these three different scenarios with um, the subscription service from Dollar Shave Club to automotive, from Instagram, the, the expectation of self-expression, all the way to the ripple effect that is caused by um, the e-scooter shared service is that consumers live in an expectation economy. And so that means that your competitors are the best in class, whoever they may be. So you need to look beyond your own industry. You, you need to look across uh, innovations, across categories, and really understand and ask yourself, what are the expectations that are being created 
because of these innovations and how will this transfer to my door? It can be sooner than you think. So look at Spotify and consider how you can offer similar um, service when it comes to relevance. Look at Airbnb and how you can create services um, or tailor your services so that it offers the same um, way of connecting with strangers, the same community feel. So look across and see the best in class and try to ask yourself, how can I satisfy the same expectations in my business? And if you forget everything that I say so far, just remember the summary. Uh, this is a summary of the trend-driven innovation framework, a new way for you to see the avalanche of new business, new services coming into the market, especially today, and ask yourself, how can I navigate this time? And basically, if I can explain to you again and summarize this diagram, on one hand, yes, you know the world is changing all the time, but don't forget that consumers' needs stay the same. And so when there's a gap between what consumers are seeing because of the change and the way they want their needs to be satisfied, you see on the top that, that there is an expectation gap. You want to address that gap. And by addressing that gap, you will hit the sweet spot with your innovation. But if you only look at the drivers of change and you try to innovate, you try to make sense of innovations, you will only come up with novelties, with fads. They, they're exciting, they're interesting because they take into account probably the latest technology, but then they don't serve consumers' fundamental needs. So it will quickly come and go. On the other extreme, if you try to create innovations that targets people's basic needs, the need for belonging, the need for connection, but you don't take into account how the world is changing. You don't factor that into your innovation process. And that means you're just creating more of the same. So remember that diagram, take a screenshot if you want to, and get back to your team and ask yourself, ask the team, how can we innovate on the sweet spot? that addresses the drivers of change that we're seeing, but also targeting consumers' uh, basic needs. And yes, this takes practice, and I would strongly encourage you um, to take the time to take one innovation. So it works both ways. You can take an innovation to help you identify trends and ask yourself, what is the basic needs that is being satisfied? What drivers of change um, plays a part in creating these innovations and therefore what are the emerging expectations and analyzing different innovations um, using this framework will allow you to start spotting trends but if you flip it the other way around you can also innovate using this canvas so you can uh, ask yourself what basic needs do I want to satisfy with my business and what drivers of change are relevant for, for me that I can actually leverage with my capabilities. Um, maybe it's augmented reality, virtual reality, or just a simple um, online um, e-commerce website that I can use. And then what kind of innovations can I launch? So it works uh, both ways in that way. So let's, let's take one example. And here um, I'll show you an activity where we break down an innovation and understand what is the emerging expectation for consumers. For example, if we look at Grab, it's a ride-sharing service in Asia. Um, and yes, Grab now has evolved to have a lot of different um, offering, but let's take a look particularly at Grab Car. So if you ask yourself, what is the basic needs? What are the basic needs that is being satisfied through Grab Car? It could be the need for convenience because now you don't have to wait for a taxi for 10 minutes. You can simply use the app to book. And it's also the need for efficiency, uh, the need to have a service that is hassle-free. And if you take a look at um, the drivers of change that is being satisfied, um, that, that this innovation is riding on, it could be smartphones, the proliferation of smartphones because Without it, consumers don't even have the means to book a Grab car in the first place. It could be the rise of sharing economy. 
And why is that important? Because if there's no other sharing economy services, you wouldn't trust yourself to step into a stranger's car. So that, that economy needs to be established in the first place. It is a driver of change, a shift um, to be exact, that plays a part into the launch of that innovation. Um, and along with it is a new social dynamics and an increased trust, uh, trust towards strangers. So then what are or what is the emerging expectation from this innovation? It could be that now there's an expectation for mobile on-demand service to be delivered by peer network instead of a top-down from institution to yourself, but it's more equal, it's peer um, wherever and whenever, um, and it's the ability to access and use and enjoy without the hassle of owning. So moving from ownership based economy to access based economy. And um, after you try doing this for different um, innovations, for example, if you're seeing the newly launched, uh, not so new anymore now, but Jewel Changi Airport, for example, ask yourself, why is there such innovation? What basic needs are being satisfied for that innovation? What drivers of change gives rise to that innovation? And try and get into this mindset, get into this practice of analyzing innovation that way. And then from there, try to anticipate, therefore, what will your consumers expect of you in your industry. So another exercise that I would encourage you to do, and it's very simple, is this. You take that emerging expectation from an innovation that you're interested in, or you think is affecting your market in a very big way, and then see how that innovation transfer across industry and eventually reach your door. So if you take a look at our previous example, and that is a grab car, we see how it's creating the expectation for consumers to be able to use and enjoy without the hassle of ownership. And so this is an example that we did with our client in the print and supply business. They want to unlock trends and use that to innovate, but they were struggling. And so after this exercise, they come up with some ideas um, and we use some other industry to just get their uh, mind uh, to warm up first. So for example, from Grab, we see how it's being transferred to fashion. You saw that earlier, um, the ability to use and enjoy without owning true style theory in the fashion industry. We saw how it's also being transferred to beauty and personal care. And this is in China where you can actually rent makeup. There's makeup booths that you can just go into um, and unlock with your smartphone and then you can start putting on your makeup if you suddenly have like a, a sudden interview or a sudden date or whatnot. Uh, of course, the hygiene factor is questionable, but there is such an innovation. We saw how that transferred to media and entertainment with Spotify. And so after that, you start asking yourself, what does it mean for print and supply? So they came up with this idea. Uh, maybe they could create a shared um, 3D printer service because that is expensive for startups and SMEs who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford them. So again, start easing into this mindset of breaking innovations into its fundamental elements and then ask yourself this series of questions, use the canvas and start um, innovating. And why this exercise is important, even though it's simple, it's because it helps you to look beyond the ridiculous. Because when we look at innovations, it's so easy to view it in the frame of our own preferences, of our own beliefs, for example, um, and we quickly dismiss an innovation um, as ridiculous, as unnecessary. But remove yourself from that picture and ask yourself about the emerging expectations. And so it helps you to look beyond the ridiculous. It also helps you, and this is what you need to do, is to look beyond a single failure or success of an innovation. Because Yes, an innovation can fail, but it's due to many factors such as poor planning, uh, poor budgeting, for example, or uh, something wrong with execution. But the expectation is there to stay. Once consumers see that innovation, they will start to have expectations on your business. And here's also a moment to 
tell you that at trend watching, we don't have the crystal ball. It's not about telling you in the future, consumers will be like this and that, but this is something that you yourself can walk away with. You yourself can be a trend driven innovator when you put on that hat, when you put on that perspective of analyzing innovations um, and using that framework to anticipate what your consumers will want next. So um, at this point, uh, we've understood what trend-driven innovation is all about and what are some of the trend fundamental um, elements. And you might be asking, okay, so I now know how I can analyze innovations and look at innovations to understand consumers, but we see innovations every day. There's so many innovations. How do you track them and how do you move from innovations to trends? And here's what I will share with you. This is a framework. This is an, a trend architecture that we have at Trend Watching. So innovations are always our unit of analysis. We look at innovations across markets, across sectors, and we ask ourselves those questions that I've explained to you earlier. And once we see similar expectations from say five or eight different innovations, it begins to form a pattern. And that pattern is what we call a trend. So trend essentially is patterns in changing expectations or new ways, pattern in seeing new ways to satisfy people's basic needs. So innovations, and then we move on to trend. And we also further categorize the trend into various mega trends. And if trends are more uh, transient, they change probably every year or, or two. Mega trends are, are more uh, slow moving. They are uh, big themes that define consumerism. And this is how we categorize um, our trends. And, and this is a trend framework that we use at Trend Watching after spotting trends uh, for 15 years or more. So um, we have 16 mega trends and we categorize the mega trend based on the fundamental human needs that is being satisfied through the, uh, the trend or the innovations. So it's more internal. And then on, on the other spectrum, uh, we also look at the big forces that shape consumerism and business. So for example, you see that um, status seekers there, it's all about people's need to uh, have status, uh, to have a certain social standing. And there's many ways, many trends that can be categorized under it, and also many innovations that fall under it as well. And Betterman, for example, it's all about consumers' needs for self-improvement. And that could be uh, about their mental well-being, it could be about their um, improvement when it comes to productivity, and so innovations like wearable devices, tracking devices would fall under there and so on and so forth. So if you're interested in this, you can um, reach out to me and then I'll be happy to share more with you. But um, the crucial thing about the trend framework is uh, it helps you to focus on which innovation is important for you uh, and which trend is important for you to track. So as a business, I would suggest zooming into maybe three or four mega trend and then just keep uh, focusing and trying to find new innovations there. Um, so this is what I said earlier, for example, status seekers is all about the never ending pursuits of status and some of the trends under status seekers could be um, status stories or skills or virtual experiences. Um, and now, so we first know how to spot trends, we now know how to track trends and categorize trends. Let's see it in action. How can you practice to be a trend driven innovators? Um, and I know that we might be running out of time if we want to have about 10 minutes uh, at the end for Q&A. So let's see it in action and maybe we can look at the first two ways of how we can come up with a trend. So there, there are many ways to um, formulate, to understand a trend according to the different fundamental trend elements. So you can start with seeing innovations and then ask yourself, what drivers of change, what basic needs, what emerging expectation. Or you can start by asking yourself, what is a driver of change that is happening right now in the market? And therefore, how can I um, 
see innovations that are backing this change and therefore what is the trend or you can start with the basic needs maybe right now when people are quarantined in their homes what how, how can they satisfy their need for connection how can they satisfy their need for entertainment so you can ask yourself those questions and then see um, how the research process goes and how you can come up uh, and start seeing the trend so let's see and go through the first um, approach so two innovations and how we come up with the trend from those two innovations for example we saw um, just a month ago Taobao Live in China it's uh, an online retailer that is offering a streaming service um, and they help to boost of the farmers income by helping them to turn their fields into live streaming studios. So the idea is for them to be able to connect with people in the city because they live in rural areas and through live streaming, then people are able to um, watch shows about their livelihood, about how they farm uh, their produce. And then because of that, then they are able to buy uh, the produce um, because otherwise they wouldn't have access to um, that kind of knowledge, that kind of livelihood um, of the farmers, and then that boosts the farmer's income. And also about the same time, we saw this other innovation, and this is from uh, JD.com. So JD.com partner up with an alcohol brand and uh, they created this live online clubbing experience where you can come together as live stream and then you can enjoy a clubbing experience with them. And yes, uh, on first glance, it might seem uh, different that one is about um, agricultural products and the other one is alcohol brands and you won't relate the two. But actually, if, if you ask yourself what basic needs um, this two innovations satisfy, you will come up with this observation, with this trend that we call uh, shop streaming and it's all about the evolution of e-commerce um, by combining shopping and elements of live streaming and that is going to uh, fundamentally rewrite the rules of online commerce and then we ask ourselves uh, what are some drivers of change that contribute to uh, this shop streaming trend and over the past years we saw how mobile e-commerce sales uh, grow uh, radically and now people are moving to shop online and therefore the space uh, is getting more and more saturated. At the same time, in a different sphere, people are uh, doing more and more social content and expressing themselves more through platforms like TikTok. And we start seeing uh, entrepreneurs like Pearl Bro back in 2017 who find uh, an opportunity to make money out of it. So basically he does this show where he open muscles and then people will have to bet whether or not the muscle that he opens has a pearl in it. And in that process, live streaming himself, opening muscles, he made a four uh, USD uh, billion because of that uh, process. And so big brands jump into it as well. And, and then shortly after uh, Pearl Bro, you see uh, Taobao Live, uh, being open and now it has become the norm for people to actually start uh, selling online but not only selling directly but actually using entertainment using shows as a means uh, to to sell online and we see the growth uh, of local live stream reaching 450 million viewers and generating 4.4 billion in sales um, that's crazy crazy growth and underneath all this change, this drivers of change, we understand that it's because people have this need to connect with others online. It's moving digitally and even more so when people now are in quarantine. So they are now satisfying their needs for connection in this new way. And so then this is the light bulb moment for this trend for shop streaming. For you as a business, how can you look at this innovation, this, this basic needs that is being satisfied and this drivers of change and ask yourself, how could you create an online shopping environment where people can just come and hang out and chat? So that is one approach in which we are seeing um, how you are able to understand and, and identify a trend by looking at innovations 
as your starting point and then start asking yourself the drivers of change and then ask yourself the basic needs and then the expectation and afterwards how can you innovate to address that expectation and um, I still have two more examples but I'm happy to share with you the presentation afterwards so you also can get uh, a glimpse of what are the other two trends that are um, happening right now when it comes to uh, a, a business environment in a COVID world. But at this point, I just want to um, wrap this up and and remind you again of this uh, big overview when it comes to trend-driven innovation. Uh, it's all about looking at innovation and asking yourself uh, the basic needs and the drivers of change and addressing the expectation gaps for you to deliver meaningful innovations. And remember that you live in an expectation economy, that your competitors are the best in class, whoever they may be, and you need to start looking at innovations across your industry. And remember that with this um, mindset, you now have the power to set new expectations in your industry and launch meaningful innovations for your consumers. But it's not enough to just know trends. You need to apply, you need to experiment. And you can start by maybe uh, getting a hand on this book, um, our book, Trend Driven Innovation, or even just using the canvases that we have that is available online. And um, if you would like to and ask me more questions, you can do so in the um, questions function this during this webinar, but you can also connect with me uh, via email or through my LinkedIn. And you can also be part of our global community by uh, joining our twin uh, network on twin.trendwatching.com and subscribe to our innovation of the day newsletters where, where you can uh, get inspired with one innovation a day and then run with the framework that um, we just learned earlier on how you can turn that insight into innovation. Um, and so with that, um, I'll end my presentation. Um, and again, I apologize for the other two trends uh, that we uh, don't have time to go through, but really this is because the focus of this webinar is to help you really understand how uh, this methodology works and how you yourself will be able to start spotting and start acting uh, yourself rather than giving you the download of the trends because Again, that's also available online on our um, post-corona uh, report. So I will open up the floor for Q&A. Um, and a Okay, let me see some of the questions. What is UbiTech? Um, so UbiTech is all about the prevalence of technology. So if you're in a tech business, you would want to focus on that. Uh, and, and under UbiTech, we, tech, we track um, innovations uh, that, that comes from the latest uh, technology, for example, um, AR, VR, or um, technology that is being used to monitor when it comes to maybe privacy or security. Um, so that is uh, UbiTech. Um, how can you approach to study or spot trends for B2B business. Uh, so yes, primarily, and a lot of our clients are B2C clients, but recently we are seeing more and more B2B businesses uh, coming to us because they want to understand how uh, their clients are serving um, the end consumers and therefore how can they serve their clients better. So it's kind of a, a jump, but um, some B2B businesses are already uh, uh, staying ahead by, by thinking along that way. Um, and also, um, sometimes they're also looking at uh, their clients, their B2B clients as people anyway. So um, by understanding our deep consumer needs, you are also able to tailor your B2B offering um, accordingly. Um, so... Let me look at some of the other questions. Um, 
cons whether consumer trend always occurs simultaneously with market demand uh, and how they are related to each other. Um, I probably would need a bit more context into the question, but if I understand it correctly, uh, with market demand, you mean the demand from the consumer side as well? And if so, then that would go uh, sim simultaneously. But of course, sometimes um, what's interesting is that the pace can be different, but we might be seeing a huge demand in a certain uh, innovation or in a certain market. But spotting trends is all about understanding what we call weak signals. Um, and that is innovations that may not be on everyone's radar yet, but the expectation uh, that is being created will soon uh, go into uh, the mainstream consumers. So then um, most of the time it will be simultaneous, but of course um, some businesses, they want to stay ahead and they want to understand those weak signals that are already happening uh, in the market. Okay, we might have questions, uh, time for maybe three more questions. What kind of proof do client ask when you present them with a trend? Is there a physical research studies taken up? Um, so usually when client come to us to understand trends, they uh, sometimes would also supplement it with other traditional market research firm if they're interested in understanding uh, the quantitative aspect of it. but uh, most of the time they are able to commission those work and then they get those insights uh, quantitatively, but they are unable to plot what's next and they want to see uh, ideas from uh, seemingly unrelated uh, innovations that they're spotting and that's where we come in. Uh, so it's more about, uh, like I said earlier, understanding weak signals and, and new innovations um, in the market and uh, charting your strategy from there. So we are uh, qualitative. Uh, where can I connect to the to get the presentation on COVID? So we have a free report that we call um, the trends, uh, a post-corona world. And these are 10 trends that have been radically accelerated by the virus. You can go to our website and download it for free. We also just launched a, a new website called covidinnovations.com and we now have about 400 innovations across the world that tracks um, innovations related to COVID-19. What would be your revenue model for us as a business, you mean? Um, our revenue model, we uh, have the premium online database where um, clients can subscribe to and get all the downloads of different innovations, different trends that we're tracking, and also uh, our academy um, tool, uh, different canvases that they can use with their teams to move from insight to innovation. So that is one uh, revenue source. We also do um, live engagements, and that is working directly with our clients to do keynotes um, and workshops to train their uh, teams. Okay, about four more minutes. What is Trend Watching Academy going to be? Um, so currently Trend Watching Academy is being piloted for members of our twin community, uh, but we're in the middle of uh, finalizing um, the commercial launch of it and it's most likely to be hosted in um, a massive open online course platforms like maybe Udemy, um, etc. And then you will be able to enroll and watch the videos and then get certified on how you can become a trend-driven innovator. Will trends be location or geographically specific? That's another good question. Um, so when we talk about consumer expectations, it is um, universal because your consumer in um, maybe in India or another consumer in Indonesia, they can look at the latest Apple phone, for example, and start having expectations about what a good phone should look like, even though they may not have um, actually physically touched that iPhone. So when it comes to expectation, it travels across region, across borders, uh, but of course some trends 
uh, some subtrends could be specific to location or geographic. Um, and that's why in trend watching, we do track uh, trends on a global level, but we also uh, has a team in APAC that covers uh, trends that are more related to APAC. Because for example, um, if you look at the trend for um, most obviously like Alibaba or JD.com, they are empowering mom and pop stores in China uh, and they're launching 1000 stores um, every day, that's what they said, uh, to um, empower them and give them um, a software system where they could uh, earn more revenue. Uh, and we see that happening as well in Indonesia um, when it comes to Tokopedia empowering small stores or with uh, Warung Pintar. Uh, we see that in India when it comes to the uh, Kiranas. And so it's more APAC specific, but we don't really have this mom and pop stores uh, like we do in APAC in mm, the US, for example. So that trend would then be more uh, region specific. But of course, the basic needs that is being satisfied, the need for empowerment, um, the, the need for um, brands to contribute to um, positive impact for the society that transcends uh, region. All right, um, I think we have now come to the end of the um, session. I will pass the time back to Swati to wrap things up. And thank you so much for staying until the end. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, sharing more about trend-driven innovation. And it's a really special uh, webinar because usually what we do is giving our audience a download of the trends. But now we are kind of working backwards and, and sharing more about how we work at Trend Watching with you. So this has been really um, interesting. And thank you for um, all of the questions. If your question is not answered yet, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn or email, and I'll be happy to answer them. So thank you once again for uh, QBlue, especially for hosting this webinar. Um, and yes, I'll pass it back to Swati. Thank you, Nia. And thank you all for joining in. We'll be sharing the presentation and the recording. All right, thanks. Have a good evening.